thank all of you for coming this morning. This is a phenomenal turnout. Give yourselves a round of applause because you deserve it. When you hear about communities not getting involved, they're obviously not talking about this community. So again, you're welcome and thank you. And without you, the senator and the congresswoman and I, we couldn't do our jobs. I just want to, and I'll be brief, the three of us have worked closely. Not only are we friends, but we understand that together we have more power than if we work separately. I want to, where is, is it a Deanna Cherry? Is she here? I got and read your, this is the first invitation. I had heard about this meeting, but yours was the first invitation I got. I thought it was a, I thought it was a great uh, email and inspired me. And I just wanted to, us to look at each other eyeball to eyeball. <laughs> and I don't want to pass this off as well. And, and I have to compliment my, my staff. Basically, when we began working on this, it was during the holiday season. So you've got people that aren't at work and on vacation and uh, all of this. Because things really got hot and heavy right before Thanksgiving. But again, the three of us have been working closely. And I'm happy to announce to you today that on this past Monday, I met with the general manager of, Bill, of planning, the general manager of building and safety, the city attorney's office, and as of Wednesday, the drilling has been stopped. <laughs> building and safety, and we have a representative, raise your hand, from building and safety today. They will go to the site every day, twice a day, at different times to ensure that they are not drilled. <laughs> Yesterday in the city council, I introduced a motion that's asking the it, it, to work with Senator Mitchell, all of the state agencies that have some jurisdiction over this, we've asked them to work together and to help us, you know, give us information, monitor the situation, and what have you, and I got a unanimous vote on that. And every resolution has to be sent to a committee where that committee reviews it, I sent it to my committee. So I, I think I have a feeling what's going to happen with that uh, uh, resolution. Um, we cannot stop this forever. I can't even speak to you directly about how I stop. Because I don't want to hear it. <laughs> on channel 7 and 4 o'clock. This is a tremendous chess match that is going on right now. And Senator Mitchell, Congresswoman Bass, and myself, and the supervisor, and the assemblyman, we're all playing this chess game. So we're going to have, I believe, enough time to have community meetings where a lot of the questions that you have, that we have, that you have, Pastor, can be answered. So what I would request is that there be a group formed with church representatives, the community, our offices, so we can begin to plan these hearings and where, and I would hope we would have a, a early evening or early in the morning on the weekend. 
Now, Miss Lacey, I want to Deron Williams from my office is here. Sylvia Lacey is here. Billy Green. Did I forget anything? Oh, did we, we sent four letters. We sent letters to all of the, 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 the state agencies. And Wells, I have seen your moments. <laughs> so, and did I forget anything? She yeah. said no. So I'm okay. But anyway, I'm not an expert on oil drilling, and my guess is the majority of the people here are either. We do have some that know more than others. And I do believe that it is your government at every level that has to make sure that you and your family is safe and protected. So I know that's our responsibility, and we'll do everything that I can to make sure that we do what you hired us to do. But for the next two days, have a good meal, relax, get some sleep, because it temporarily, for now, is closed. Right. It is closed. No oil is being pumped as we speak. Just uh, uh, thank you so much, Council President Weston. Just a quick question. One of the pieces that uh, had been prepared for this and did our research for it, was around the evacuation plan because of the densely uh, populated area. So I just want to, uh, on behalf of our community council, Council President Wesson, uh, as we have the hearings, as we look at this, uh, how can we include a, an evacuation plan, uh, uh, shoot drilling, or you know this will start again, uh, with you know what the potential is around you know explosion, etc. How is that can work in the evacuation plan so that uh, we can together work uh, to facilitate that? What? Well, I guess I said we need to get together. We need to quickly try to determine when we're going to have uh, meetings. I, I think at a minimum we should have three. I have had discussions. One thing I did forget with the uh, the uh, oil company, they will be willing to come participate in these meetings. I think for us, what we need to do right now is to begin to set those meetings so that the community can express their concerns, they can respond, and also you should know that I have uh, told Building and Safety that I want an objective uh, uh, expert who has no affiliation with this company to come and help us sort through so that we'll have someone, an object, a definite person there, uh, planning and building and safety is trying to locate that person. Okay? Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is State Senator Holly Mitchell. Um, and, uh, thank you. As a lifelong uh, member of Holman, I'm going to welcome them also to Holman, Pastor. Um, and I have to say, growing up in this church in the 60s and 70s, you know, Holman was the base of the civil rights and social justice movement in Los Angeles. And so seeing this hall filled with people today to talk about the environmental justice issue of our time is very reminiscent of this um, church's past. And so I'm glad, glad, glad to see you all here. And so as you appropriately challenge us as your elected officials, I'm gonna challenge you. Because it's not enough to show up today. I think it's phenomenal that we have multiple levels of government represented today. And you've heard from Council President Weston say that we're working collaboratively together. But you've got to join with us in that and continue to come and be an active participant. And I'll tell you why I say that. Uh, these are a new set of front teeth, Councilwoman because I lost my last set when I introduced my crappy moratorium bill last year in Sacramento. <laughs> and the state dental benefits only let me get a new set of front teeth once a year. <laughs> and when we presented that bill in policy committee, in the Finance Committee, there was not a single Angelino who lined up to testify in support. So I gotta tell you how I felt. I turned around, there was a long line of people, a lot of folks from Northern California who were concerned about this issue, not one Angelino. So it helps me and it gives me cover 
that the city council gives us a resolution asking. That gives me cover. But nothing like when you show up. You're not a leader if you turn around and there's nobody behind you. And I think we have a unique opportunity around this issue to organize and not fall into the NIMBYism syndrome. And I'm going to challenge you all, West Adams, Jefferson Park residents, to reach out to your neighbors in very close proximity, Culver City, Baldwin Hills, Ladera, because they've been organizing around the Inglewood oil field for a number of years. And while the issues might, in some areas, be technically slightly different, in theory, they are the same. We presented in committee similar slides showing the demographics, the hundreds of thousands of Angelinos who live within a half mile, one mile radius, the numbers of schools, elementary, the numbers of churches, uh, places of worship, the number of senior facilities. And we talked about, we talked about it in the context of urban oil drilling. When we hear the stories on NPR about fracking, et cetera, we're talking about other states, and my colleagues in the legislature, we were talking about Monterey Shale. It's different in LA County. You live next door to oil drilling. Yes. We have a different lens, a different perspective we bring to this debate. Yes. And so I can't stay with you because I do have to go take an oath so I can legitimately go represent you. <laughs> I'm going to get a mouth guard and we will be introducing <laughs> another cracking moratorium bill in the community. That will be broader in scope. We will talk about affidation and all of the realities of what's happening on those properties today. We're going to do that. And I hope this go round, I turn around and I see you standing with us. In terms of what's appropriate at the state level, um, Dogger, we'll also be talking to Dogger specifically with, with regard to the communities that we're here to talk about today. To really talk about the disproportionate use of activization and similar wealth simulation approaches in densely populated communities. We want them to analyze that and give us a report back. Because like I said, I think our circumstance in LA County is unique. You know, Inglewood oil field is the largest urban oil field in the nation. And so we've got a unique set of circumstances that require a unique and strategic and smart response. West Adams, Sugar Hill has rich history in Los Angeles, and we're not going to let that go away. We have a political responsibility. Thank you very much for the invitation, Pastor. With that, I'll turn it over to Congresswoman Garibay. Everybody hear me? <clears throat> it is always inspiring to come to Holman. As Holly was saying, Holman has always been a center for social and economic justice in our community. And I look at the turnout today, and it is amazing to see how many people have turned out with the concern for an issue that is so important and so vital to the health and safety of our community. going on because you know working on the national level you know there's all the international concerns about uh, oil and us getting involved in wars because of oil and so many years ago there was a push to increase domestic oil drilling well you know I mean all of that sounded good and frankly when I always heard about it I was always concerned about the national parks because that's where they talked about the national parks they talked about the ocean they talked about you know uh, Alaska Never in my wildest dreams did I think about a neighborhood, even though I knew I lived right next door to the 350 oil wells that uh, Senator Mitchell just finished talking about in the Baldwin Hills area. I knew about those oil wells. I drive down Pico Boulevard. I knew about that oil well. I know about the Prius oil well, which is the oil well in Beverly Hills. I don't know why that oil well looks so pretty. But anyway, I, I, I've known about those oil wells. And of course, I drive by Adams and then the one that's right by Mount St. Mary, but never did I know that those were oil wells on Adams. And so the idea that we want to increase domestic oil drilling, I think, is a good thing on the one hand. 
but we don't want to increase domestic oil drilling and compromise the health and safety of our communities at the same time. is that if we've reached the technological capacity to put a robot on Mars, we can figure out how to do this stuff safely. And I think that is what we have to push for, is that you have to have the technology, you can't just do it in a ragtag fashion, and you can't just not be concerned about how it's done. What you talked about in terms of the concentration, if you had to come out there, and who knows what was happening before you came out. Who knows how many days that had been going on? I think about your granddaughter with Hodgkins, and I think about the health concerns, and those are really, really serious concerns. And so the direct question that was asked to me was, will I ensure that the responsible federal agencies conduct an inspection of the facility? Know that I have already reached out to the Environmental Protection Agency. I will follow up with that. I did tell them that I was coming to a community meeting and wanted to report back to them afterwards. So I will make sure that when I go back to Washington next week that I meet with them and see if we can bring EPA uh, representatives here to Los Angeles so they can see exactly what's going on. You know, in my past, uh, I worked for many years as a, a health care provider, and again, as I listened and, and thought about your testimony with your granddaughter, I do think that we need to look for specific health studies, and I think that there's a variety of ways to get those done, so I want to pursue that as well, whether it's with one of our local universities asking um, uh, for a private foundation funding, but I think that there needs to be specific research that goes into the neighborhood to see. I know that in the area where I live by the Baldwin Hills oil fields, a lot of people are concerned about cancer clusters. I don't know if there is one. There possibly is. I don't know if it's related to the oil drilling. It possibly is. But we need to determine that to see. I have to tell you that I'm very glad that we have the leadership that we do in our city and that the council president was able to come today and make the announcement and he also said that there's going to be building and safety to go out a couple of times a day. But just as Senator Mitchell challenged everyone here, and I know you're here because you are involved, otherwise you wouldn't be here. But I do think that the diligence vil has to continue to make sure that even though building and safety is, is going out, we still have to make sure that the drilling actually has stopped. And so that's where you can come in and that's where you can participate. So I just want to thank you for uh, all the work that's done for bringing the attention of this issue uh, to my office and know that when I go back to DC, we will stay on this until we get this resolved. Thank you very much.